Hey Tube, Vinny M here, and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today we're doing another reenactment video based around the impression of an aid man, today known as a medic. Now, in reenacting, we like to be as authentic as possible. And one of the ways to be authentic is whenever you're shooting blanks at each other and someone falls and starts screaming medic, is that when the medic runs up, they actually put a bandage on that person and they actually pretend to treat the simulated injury. My unit does this really well, but not all units do. And one of the things that causes people to not effectively be able to do this is the fact that the actual bandages from the time period are hard to find and expensive. So people don't want to actually use them on other people at reenactments. They're afraid that they'll damage them or that once they apply this, they won't get it back. So most of the time what you see is people running around with modern bandages to wrap these simulated injuries at a reenactment. And that just doesn't look good. Uh, the last reenactment I went to, and I'll, I'll insert a picture here. And that's me laying on the ground with a guy treating a simulated leg injury. And I don't know if you can really tell, but that is a fully modern type of stretch gauze that he's using on my leg. That just doesn't look right. This is an actual bandage from the time period. It's a five inch by five yard muscle and cotton bandage. This is its original package. And this is one that's been unwrapped. So this is what the bandage should actually look like. It's kind of got a yellow color. It's not stretchy at all. It's just cotton. So I'm gonna show you how to make these bandages. Not only make them, but make them where they actually look bloody when you're finished. So it looks like the person you treated is actually bleeding. And this is a far better solution that looks far better to the public if they're watching at a public reenactment and looks far better and more authentic to other reenactors who you might be putting this on. And it really gives it that extra little bit of immersion. So let's get to it. The first thing we're going to need is a roll of mousseline fabric. You can see it does actually have that yellow color even if it's new. Now this stuff is available from Amazon because it's used in professional waxing, like hair removal waxing. It's not incredibly expensive. It's about 15, 16 bucks for 40 yards. Now it is 3.5 inches instead of the 5 inches it would normally be. Now to the naked eye, it's really not all that different. And if you're good at wrapping this stuff, as you wrap it, overlap about an inch on each side, and when you're done wrapping it on someone, it will look like it was 5 inches wide anyway. Now the other option is to buy sheets of this stuff and cut it at five inches if you are determined you have to have five inch pieces of this. However, the sheets are much more expensive than the rolls. So it's kind of one of those things where you have to decide, do you want to be super authentic and have the exact five inch? Or do you want to go for quantity, go with the 3.5 inch where I can get more and apply it to more people and give more people that extra immersion factor of having this applied to them at a reenactment. The next thing you're going to need is some fake blood. I got this uh, can of blood splatter spray, or bottle I should say, from Amazon as well. It's not overly expensive either. Fake blood is usually around 11 to $14 a quart, but this little tiny spray bottle only ran me Seven fifty nine. Now what you want to do is you want to cut a piece of this to somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to 10 feet. You'll have to decide how much you want, but remember, if you bought the same roll as me, you have 40 yards to work with. So if we cut it at 2 yards, we'll get 20 pieces out of it, which would be 6 feet. A six foot section of this is enough to go around most people's leg 
between two and four times. And since we're not actually applying it as a bandage, we're applying it more for looks, more for the immersion, that's usually sufficient. Ultimately, it will be up to you to decide what length you want to cut your roll. So let's cut a section off, off camera here. So off camera, I cut a eight foot section. I went ahead and went with eight for this one because I measured what was left on my roll and eight works out better for me to get an even number from my roll of what's left. So what you want to do is you want to take the last about foot or so of the roll and you want to apply your fake blood to it. Okay. You can go down a little bit more as well. All right. Now the only reason that you only do the end of the roll is because we're now going to roll this backwards. And when you roll it backwards, this will end up on the inside of the roll. So the roll, when you pull it from your pouch, will actually look completely clean. But then once you put it on someone and get to the very end, the end will look bloody, like they've bled through it as you finish wrapping it. So we'll pull this off to the side and let it dry a little bit. And be right back. So that took substantially longer to dry than I anticipated. Uh, some people might say, well, you could use food coloring in water or just food coloring to color this, but it doesn't look as good as the fake blood. Uh, this is theatrical stuff meant for Halloween costumes and such, and it does give a good appearance of splatter. Uh, it also, if you spray it a lot in one spot, you'll get darker spots, so you can make it look more authentic once you've played with the stuff a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to roll it backwards. From the bloody end to the clean end. All right, so once you're done rolling it, the outside of your roll, except for the, the ends, looks clean. So if you have a reenactor that takes a hit, you pull this out of your bag. Initially, it looks like you're putting a clean bandage on them. So. I'll get this started here, like so, right, let's say I have a wrist injury, like I said, as you wrap, kind of go high and low, and then it will look better, because, again, this wasn't a 5 inch wide section like the real ones, so now looks better because I've made it at least 5 inches wide as I wrapped. Now. Near the end, I'm going to start to expose that bloody section, right? Like so. And then, what I want to do is at the very end, I want to tuck. And that's how we're going to keep it in place on our reenactor. And you can see, this looks good. It looks apart it looks bloody right it looks like I was injured especially the way that I have it wrapped it looks like my entry wound is probably right here right and then back here we have less blood so probably not as injured right there so there you have it that is how you make a muslin bandage for reenacting as an aid man now to hold these in place like once you roll them you know the originals were in paper i just put a strip of masking tape around it to keep it from coming unraveled in my medic bag but some people may prefer to actually wrap it in white paper like the originals or even print on a piece of white paper a label that looks like the originals and then when you package them they will look exactly like an original. So uh, with that, the sky's the limit, however you want to do it. But right there is your 
very, very well simulated and very immersive Muslim combat dressing. That's all I have for you guys. As always, like and subscribe, and have a nice day.